It's Andy here. I'm doing a more intense load test. So right now at 25.5 volts. I don't have my charger turned on. Eventually I'll have a relay hooked up so that um, it can't be running this charger if you're using the battery system because that would be a little ridiculous. It does do about 6 amps. Let's show that really quick. I'll flick it on and uh, let's see, see it says it's running so 31 degrees is just this box temperature so yeah 7 amps. There's some really good settings in this device. I actually would recommend this one. Look at my previous videos to see the info and the links to where I bought it from. But I, I would actually highly recommend this one. This thing, I don't know, it's cheap. I haven't found anything better than it, which is terrifying because this thing is a death trap. Uh, watch my other video to uh, see why it's a death trap. It's It has electrocuted me before, and yeah, it's, 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 a, I still have no words for how horrible this thing is, but it's cheap and it works really well. So I'll turn it off now. It creates a lot of heat on this heat sink right here in the back and this guy here. This guy here is 70 volts, so just ridiculous. Okay, 2.6 amp draw is uh, what it does, what this guy does. This is coming from the grid, 200 watts. So right now it's doing 200 watts, not 500 like it claimed. So that means uh, over half of it is dedicated to these other voltages, the 6.7 and the 9, 9 up, 9 down. 70 kilowatts, 107 volts. I have to take this apart and change that to 120. So that's good, 8.5 amps. That's, that's an important, 107 volts AC and 8.5 amps and we're at 912 watts temperature so this is warm it's that's normal that i'd get that warm this is warm so these green ones they warm up they warm up i mean this thing's kind of a waste but there's a warm spot over here somewhere um, it's mostly the bottom ones 89 92, yeah, there's a warm spot there. So there's one with high resist, the internal resistance. Somewhere near, that's the, that is like, this is proof of how, see, 84. The, uh, they should be around 84 to 89. And anywhere where you see 90 and higher, 93. All right, so I'm gonna use the hand method. That's another good thing is, right? I can, I can use this tester and I can do the hand method to find it. All right, so I go along, it's more here, somewhere right here. There's a lot of them. They're all getting warmed up now, actually. That right here, right here, there's one. It's probably these stupid blue ones. It's getting really warm. Right here, somewhere in here, and somewhere in right here. So here and here, there's one. See how fast that is? I don't have to do anything. Right here is cool, actually. Jeez, these ones are doing great. Okay, warmish here. Somewhere in here, 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 and up here. Right here. Right here somewhere there's one. These are cool. Cool to the touch. I found the top voltage layer is supposed to be pretty cool but the bottom row warms up a lot so if someone knows exactly why that'd be a uh, nice let me know um, put a comment in there I believe it's because it works this way down and this guy has to put up with the most and that's why it's slowly getting hotter but earlier it was warm ish here no it was cold up here and it's it's so warm in here so these ones see warm I put these to the side because cool, yeah, really cold. These are room temperature. You go down, it gets hotter and hotter, and then you hit these, you hit the bottom, and they're really warm. So that is something you need to know any battery system, right? But those other battery systems where it's a giant brick of them all soldered together or kachunk together, 
the um you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to know that and this can i can put a heat sink on top of this thing right i can put a giant heat sink on top of these touching them i can maybe even put some kind of compound that'd be a little insane but uh these things will not heat up that once i get two or more then all my heat problems will go away other than you know internal resistance of individual batteries have gone bad they're not doing too bad. I, I honestly, I'll test out those areas and I'll find, with internal resistance testing, I'll find which batteries are bad. But it only seems to be three to four batteries that are actually bad, unless there's two of them. So I, yeah, right here, somewhere in here. It's hard to tell. Yeah, see it's cold here. Warm, warm. Cold here, cold here, cold here. So there's, there's something in these two spots, and uh, internal resistance testing will prove me right. I bought a shunt, I bought a shunt, so I can tell how much amperage is coming off of here. So the shunt will go right here, between these wires and this guy here. And it's a pretty big one, plus it's got a nice uh, multimeter, like this guy. It's going to look a lot like this guy, but better. Um, so I'll have a shunt put in. This is warmed up a little bit. It's warmed up a little bit, so that's, it's probably just heat from these wires. These wires, they only get so warm, and then that's it. That's as warm as they'll get, which is really good news. Um, only slightly warm on these, on this positive. The positive terminal doesn't, so you have to worry about heat buildup on your negative only. But it is, you never go under with your cable. If you can find this big, thick, braided cable, you know, go for it. Definitely. I only have this much. This is all I got. It was taken off of an old, big industrial motor. Let's see. 3 3.5.7. 3.5.7. 3.63. 3.6. 3.64, 3.6, almost 3.7. That is interesting. Okay, so look, 3.7, 3.7, 3.6, 3.6, 3.7, 3.7. Well, yeah, the this 3.7. So the middle ones are are getting drained faster. So either. There's a bad battery batch. Well, this was 3.7, so that means there's not much of a problem. So either it's just a phenomenon, right? It's it's just the way these batteries work, or one of there's a few of these with high internal resistance, right? Just in this this group, this group, this group, this group. These have fine, 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 fine. So, but we had, we had heat build up in here, so that's kind of interesting. This is really good to note. Good to note if you're building this stuff. All right, twenty-five point three. All right, let's. Uh, it's been running for quite a while now. Uh, I don't bother timing it because this is just an initial test. I'm going to charge it up to full, and then I'm going to plug it into my big, uh, big computer and play PUBG for a bit. Um, maybe, maybe today. Um, Canada Day is coming up, so I'll be gone. Busy, busy, busy. So we'll see what I can do. But uh, so far, very happy. I just need to get the shunt. I also need to get a. I'm getting a clamp meter. Like this is a this is a perfect digital multimeter. It uses two AAA batteries, right? Get it from Canadian Tire. Don't ever buy any other multimeter than this one. And then buy a really cheap, shitty clamp one that you can measure amperage using the clamp. You don't don't measure amperage with this thing, man. Like I have problems with the uh, quick blow fuses, so don't measure amperage with this. Get another meter that does amperage with a clamp. But yeah, this one, this thing, I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. I love it a lot. I love this thing a lot. I have owned so many multimeters. I have some really, really old ones too. I have some old ones. Check it out. Check it out. All right, look at how old this guy is. I got this from a friend. Uh, my friend Janice. Um, her father, uh, yeah, 
This one's nice. I like it. I, uh, I just, I can't bring myself to using these things, even though they're perfect, because, uh, you know, it's like an age thing, right? This one's neat. Look at that. Look how neat that is, man. This is old school. That is so old school. That's cool. I just, I don't want to wreck them, right? I love them. I love them. They're neat. I'm into that stuff. All right, so my next thing to do is to drain the batteries fully as much as I can, take them all off, then flip this bracket upside down, put liquid tape on the underside of all these connections, and then put electrical tape over that, then put the drywall down, then put this thing down, then screw it down with these little, little screws here. They might be long enough. They might not, but who knows, who knows. And uh, then that should be an almost fully done power wall. These will get big blocky connectors for them, probably. These will all get chopped off because it's a little dangerous to have them sticking out. So I'll only have the tops and then everything else will be chopped off on either side. So I'll have uh, terminal, terminal bolts on each side. Uh, so that I can connect stuff up to it and maybe even have a soldering joint so I can solder it all but Yeah, anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you think. Oh, also I um, I appreciate the comments from my last video from Steve, Mr. Miller and Harp, Harp Bloke. Yeah, I appreciate that um, For the fuses that I was talking about just to be clear so it's basically gonna be like a button battery that goes sandwiched in the back of here right so when you clip it in so it's gonna be a really thin button battery that sits right here and gets snapped in so all of these I'll have to bend each tab in a bit to accommodate this little button battery that will sit between them and inside this tiny little button it'll be two metal plates and a spring sandwich between them and the spring will be the right thickness of metal so it will act as a fuse so that if it, too much current draw goes through each one of these batteries then it'll blow and disconnect it that's way better than fucking around soldering but it'll be a lot more money but if i can get the 3d printer thing done and get the parts i can mass produce them and maybe sell them to people because I need to build a lot of them, and then I build a few more. It's pretty quick. I figure uh, I could use probably a little bit of glue, um, maybe a s punch, a stamp to make the little metal plates, and uh, or maybe I could find them pre-made if I'm lucky. But um, it'll take a lot of workarounds. But basically, the uh, plastic 3D printed, or eventually it'll be ejection mold part and then the spring and the two metal plates and that's all there is to it and then you don't have to solder tiny little wires to everything because i could have done it on the underside of this i actually did i did a bunch of tests where i made fuses and uh it was so finicky and untrustworthy i abandoned the whole thing because uh i lost my structural integrity putting in those fuses and i said no that's that's a dumb idea don't like it so I got rid of it and this this is way better I'd rather risk the uh, batteries blowing so you know no big deal anyways hope you liked the video sorry it was so long all right bye